Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It is Francesco here. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is diving into a sort of like mini video about how to choose the perfect to-do list application. Now, I get this question a lot and I do communicate with you guys via email and the likes of the comments and other places like that about which one you should choose in terms of to-do list applications. And it's a tough, it's very tough because there's so many applications out there. So what I wanted to do is give you a little bit of a taster and explain some of the things I'm gonna hopefully be doing in the next few months to give you that guide to finding the perfect to-do list application for you. Now, just before we start, we have a YouTube comment. So Roberto Miller sent this one in and he asks, I think it was in my Things 3 versus to-do list video. He said, in Things 3, can I share a task with someone that I know? Uh, I think he was wanting to share it with his partner. And that's a great question. Uh, a lot of people get confused uh, when they're looking at things three, they're like, oh, I assume you can share it with someone else. Well, you can technically share it. You can share it via mail, which will basically take the task information and send it over to them. But you can't actually interact with the other person over a task, which is a bit of a shame and it's probably one of the experiences that things relax, but then again, it's a very personal experience, a very closed experience. Uh, and actually having that collaborative function, if you want that collaborative function, I'd recommend the likes of Todoist, uh, TickTick, or other applications that have that connectivity with other people. Thing3 is one that doesn't, uh, and something that I'm sure they'll be working on over time, Roberto. So, great question. Uh, thank you very much for that, and uh, I'll include that in the description just as a, a written format. So, uh, let's jump back into how you should approach finding that to-do list application. Now, just before we start, I'm actually doing a Skillshare course very soon on this. I am publishing it probably maybe in a week or two from this video being launched. I'll do a big announcement anyway, uh, but it's called How to Find the Perfect to Do This Application. And I basically boiled it down to like an eight-part process uh, to finding that perfect to do this application for you and picking a few to get you started. So that's going to be available very soon. So I'll add the link in the description as soon as that's available. So the first experience is understanding your environment. Understanding your environment is very important. Are you going to be using this to-do lap to do list application for studying? Are you going to be using it for work or are you going to be using it for everyday casual use? It's understanding the environment you will use to do this application, which can really eradicate a lot of ones for you. So for example, let's say uh, I have a student asking me, okay, Francesco, I need a to do this application. What do you recommend? I would say, I would go with something like Tick Tick or Todoist. And the reason I explain that is because uh, they are going to be out of university in about two or three years. This means that after that experience, they need something to continually grow with them. And I feel like those two applications are strong. Now, if I heard that a student was going to be there for like five, six, seven years who would be in that environment, I would have recommended something like Wunderlist, which is a lot more simple and easy to use. Plus, it's got a freemium experience and it's pretty handy when you're sort of doing casual tasks and things like that as well. So it's not too intricate. However, if someone came to me and they said, Francesco, I've got a big project on, uh, but I'm managing it myself and I need to understand all of the granular details in it, then I might have recommended something like Todoist or To Do or Things 3, mainly because it's going to be an experience where they need to go really deep with their understanding of the project and things like that. I could have even recommended the likes of Trello or Asana, but that depends on if he wants to collaborate with other people. So the environment really does determine how you choose your to-do list application. So what I recommend is first understanding what situation you're in. Are you gonna be using it solely for casual work or are you gonna be blending it with professional? Now, I use my to-do list application for professional work, but I also blend in calendar, uh, casual work as well, which allows me to get things done across my day. So a lot of the time, you just need to have a look at the product as well to make sure it matches. So the next part of it is product. Now product is an important part because you need to understand the features and functions that map to those specific needs. So actually making sure that you review the application based on its features, based on its cross platform abilities, and its flexibility. So features are important because you need to know, for example, if you need a time tracker in there, if you work best with a time tracker, you've got to 
kill a few of the other Todoist applications because they don't have it and focus on a specific niche of Todoist applications. Um, if they have like a certain feature that you must have, uh, like for example, uh, an invoicing feature to send your invoice out afterwards or a commenting feature to communicate with other people if you need to, you need to narrow that down with the features. Cross-platform is another one as well is making sure that if you know you're going to be moving to iOS to Android or iOS to Windows in the next few months, that it's going to be available on those different devices. Now, ones to look out for is the ones that have web abilities and also ones that have applications on all sorts of devices, mainly because if you make that switch or somebody gives you a company computer, then you are there and ready. And then finally, the actual uh, flexibility of the application itself. What I like to see in a good to-do this application is the ability to be flexible. This is why I recommend the likes of Todoist quite a lot, because it's flexible to a lot of different situations. For example, I would recommend it to a student that has a three-year course, because after those three years, they can apply it to business, professional, or life, activities that they can use on a daily basis and not too intense. And that's why I recommend like Trello, Evernote and Asana to some extent in that sort of context because they're flexible resources that can be bent to your abilities. And three, the sort of net final process of that is making sure that you give yourself time to bed into that to-do list application. Now what I really recommend is to spend time with your to-do list application in the trial period. If you can spend that period of time with the application, uh, let's say you've narrowed down the environment, the product, you're happy with both, and you've pulled out three alternatives that you can use. Spend time with each of them. Uh, maybe you find that the application you try first is your best experience and you will not go back. Don't be tempted by the other ones. The other ones, if they don't provide the experience and you don't know about it, might not be a problem to you. Uh, I think a lot of people tend to switch those applications after the first few weeks just because they're like, I want something new or I want something different. So they change up and that is a time consuming thing. So making sure that you uh, actually test these applications out uh, rigorously and you're happy with them. So making sure that you test these applications and you try the free trial before you commit to any purchases is really important. So guys, I hope that gave you a nice overview. As I said, the Skillshare course goes into way much more detail than that. So the first concept is understanding your environment and your needs. Where are you gonna be using this? How fast paced are you gonna be using it? Because all of the to do applications will map to that product, which is actually the definition of the thing inside of the application, making sure it's got the right things that you need to get the job done. And number three, the implementation side, the actual uh, processing, whether the application works for you, because that is where the bread and butter is going to be and working out if you need another application early stages. Anyway, guys, I hope that gave you a nice overview of to do this applications. Uh, just three things, actually. One, if you have any comments or queries, put them in the comments below because I'll be answering future questions and videos. Uh, number two, uh, I have a Facebook group now where you guys can join. It's called the Keep Productive Community. There's almost 500 people there, so join up to day it'd be amazing to have you uh, and number three uh, i want to thank you all for supporting me on this youtube channel so feel free to subscribe anyway guys thank you so much for stopping by make sure to have a great week keep productive and i'll see you guys very very soon cheers